when I was running the Camarena case, uh, Bill Clinton became president. And uh, Bill Clinton wanted to uh, get NAFTA ratified. Barry Seal was also an informant that I worked with. He flew in cocaine into Mina Air Base. Mina Air Base was a training camp for the Contras. The late Adler Berryman Seal, pilot extraordinaire, soldier of fortune, drug smuggler, undercover agent for the FBI, DEA, U.S. Customs, and the Central Intelligence Agency. Barry Seal, who was ruthlessly assassinated in Baton Rouge, Louisiana in February 1986, plays a pivotal role. Along with his C-123K military transport plane, he affectionately named the Fat Lady in chronicling the true history of Iran-Contra. This story is about unmasking the deception that was perpetuated upon the American people at a time in the mid-1980s when a small backward state Arkansas became the epicenter of a CIA-like operation designed to do an end run around congressional law. A blank operation being backdoored out of the Reagan-Bush White House and set in place in rural western Arkansas under the watchful eyes of then-Governor William Jefferson Clinton. And at that time, Felix Rodriguez and this guy, Luis Posada Carriles and those guys, Ali North and them, they were training uh, Contras there at Mina Air Base at the same time that Ali, uh, Barry Seal was flying in cocaine into the Mina Air Base. And from what I understand, Bill Clinton and knew about it. At that juncture, uh, we arrested Roger Clinton uh, with a large amount of cocaine. And Bill Clinton immediately pardoned him. Uh, his cocaine uh, use become used as a tool for sexual favors and also for uh, uh, business uh, uh, deals that influence people. Uh, and that's when uh, Mr. Uh, Lash become quite flamboyant with his cocaine use and then ultimately uh, led to his uh, arrest and conviction. Dan Lassiter, who is best friend of Bill Clinton, who went to jail with Roger Clinton for cocaine. And by the way, let me explain something. He didn't sell cocaine. No, they were giving it away. Huge piles of cocaine in his office. Ashtray upon ashtray full at the parties, and they would give it to young girls. That's sick. Now, I want to ask you, Mr. Lassiter, you gave drugs to your employees, right? Right. You, uh, you gave drugs to your chauffeur, right? That was Chuck Berry? No. Uh, oh, he gave drugs to you. That's correct. He bought drugs for you. That's correct. And you gave drugs to people you were entertaining, right? Right. Well, even underage people you were entertaining, right? Right. So when we, I just want to make sure we have kind of your moral compass out here, that giving drugs away to your employees and to, and to, to people you're entertaining uh, even if they're underage, that's better than selling it. There's a, there's a, you see a distinction there. That's your position before this committee. I think there's a difference, yes. You know, let me tell you something. I've seen, I've seen and I've put a lot of witnesses on over the years who've done bad things. And I am a firm believer that people do put things behind them and they achieve redemption. But I also know that the first step to that is honesty and accountability for something someone has done wrong. And I have to tell you, I am astonished to hear you say, that you see, you actually view your act as having given drugs away to these people as somehow morally distinct from selling it. I mean, they were given a highly addictive drug to young girls. One particular one that comes to mind is a 14-year-old cheerleader uh, out of North Little Rock. Uh, she was uh, uh, a virgin, and ultimately he ended up uh, uh, sent her to a physician of his. Uh, the physician put her on birth control pills. Um, he used cocaine in order to, uh, to uh, ultimately she lost her virginity and she got addicted to cocaine. And the last I heard of her, when we had her subpoenaed back to the federal grand jury, uh, she was a hooker in Lake Tahoe. Once he was convicted, he went to a minimum security prison, a holiday hotel, we call them. He spent, I think it was six to eight months, and he got out. Unbeknownst to anybody, Bill Clinton, the day after he got out, granted him a full and complete pardon. 
So if you think he's tough on crime, think about a man that pardons a man that gives cocaine to kids. Fear of violence is robbing our children of their future. We must take away that fear and give them hope. We must give Alicia and all our children back their childhood. Working together, we can. Do something now. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Your president, the president of the United States, not only was a part of the system that was laundering millions of cocaine dollars, your president signed off on it. He can't deny that he did. You see, because of that, there's one little catch. Every loan at ADPA made, Bill Clinton himself had to sign off on it. More than Bill Clinton, you better identify the people in the loop of the drug running. You better identify the people in the loop for money laundering. And what you'll find there is those people go straight to Washington. Act 1062, if you look at it, it says that ADPA was developed and created to provide low interest bond loans for churches, schools, colleges. So now look what happened to our legislature. They voted on a bill creating ADPA thinking that they were getting money to colleges and schools to buy books and so forth. What better way to run thousands of tens of millions of dollars, launder it, clean it up, and use the cover of a state agency to do it? Imagine this. Guess who did the audit and the evaluation of the application? Rose Law Firm. You guessed it. Who signed it? Webb Hubble. Hillary Clinton. To reduce drug use, and drug-related crimes, we have to do many things at the same time. It has to start with community policing, with more police at the local level, working with their neighbors and the children and the friends to prevent crime and to quickly punish criminals. 